Hey guys, a uh, quick tutorial on how I incorporate my um, some of my digital backgrounds into my couture shoots. Uh, it's really simple. Um, so I'm just going to grab my selection tool here. I'm going to hit select subject. And then I'm going to just add that to the selection. I'm on my plus selection and it just made a weird selection there. So I'm just making sure it's in there. I'm hitting select and mask. My settings for this view, if yours doesn't look like this, you can just simply go up to this button on view, choose overlay. You can choose the color for the background, the opacity here. I have my feather set here, usually between one and two. And then most importantly, you want the output to be new layer with layer mask. This is the refine edge tool. And I'm just going to use a a modest size brush because what we're doing is just going around the edges and doing exactly what the brush says which is refining the edges and when you do this it's applying the settings the feathering that you put over here to the selection to soften the edges and then um, it's going to go through and try to identify if there's anything in there that doesn't belong and what I mean by that is it's looking at the, the blur the focus the colors and it's going to try to determine if in that your the brush selection size that you have if something should be removed that's why I say use modest because if you use a large brush the system's gonna think that that's your edge and it's a little hard to see since it's pink but it just removed all of the blue from her dress right there because I went over um, that edge of it now I want to do that here with her lace umbrella and I'm hoping the system is smart enough to see that the pink stays as part of it. So I'm just using that setting and I'm just hitting the lace part. And this is not really the purpose of the tutorial, um, to, but it, it helps. I mean, if you have a lace umbrella <laughs> or maybe lace material, but um, these things can really help add to the realism of your results. And the same thing with like tool and some sheer fabrics. If you go over the edge, it will remove part of it and help it look again, more realistic. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now you see where we put new layer with layer mask, it creates this separation. It's got, it's a duplicate. Here's the selection above. And so now I'm gonna grab, uh, I don't know my backgrounds here. Let's see this one. Let's do this one. Control A, Control C and then I'm going to control V and now I'm going to start resizing and I'm not too worried about the um, how sharp it is because we're going to fix that. I'm really just looking at composition here. So, you know, she's walking through, you know, a street area. Let's add a little bit of this. I want to keep those flowers in there. See, you can use landscape on um, your portraits because you don't have to use the whole image. Just use the part that you find most appealing in your composition. So I'm going to do this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur this so that I can match the background blur that I originally had to make it look a little more realistic. So we're going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and... I'm going to go right about there. Okay, so now I'm going to add a layer mask and I'm just going to use a soft brush and I'm just going to kind of try to make this look like it's part of it. So I've got a little bit of a stair there. So I'm bringing that just around the edge of the stair. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then what I'm also gonna do is add a little bit of warmth to this, this right here. First, let's mess with this. I usually will um, try to get some harmony in the color. So I'm gonna take this and go to filter camera raw 
and then I'm going to increase the shadows a bit and reduce the highlights, kind of give it a little bit of flatter. And then I'm going to go into my detail and bring the color mixer. I'm going to bring the saturation of the yellows and oranges and reds down. Let's see what's the most. So let's do the oranges are a little bit too much, too warm for the image. And then I might even go into my hue. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to push it a little bit more towards yellow. And then there, it just blends a little better for me. Now, we put we added this here. Um, we can, I'm going to move this around a little more until I'm like, ooh, before I do that, let me just click this. This makes it so you can move it around and keep your mask. See how it stays where we masked it? Like right here, if you look. Um, and let's see. And sometimes you can just go ahead and hold your control button down and move the perspective like this so that if you want a different perspective than what you have there on the background. I think I like that better. That flows better visually for me. And I'm gonna uh, add a little bit back here to this step. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna add a little bit of color to the bottom here, so I'm gonna add a solid color. I'm just pushing this brown. Let's actually get this color here. Let's start there. Use a soft light. Now that I've picked a color, I've just double clicked it and I can mess around with it and try to get a better blend with the image. Go a little bit more yellow. And you see how that kind of helps blend it all in. Now I'm gonna just take a peek. Sometimes I do this back and forth just to see that's a plant. So let's blend that out. There. Now it can look a little more realistic. And then sometimes I'll also add a curves layer and bring that down and then I'll just bring this up a little bit. Um, to help the subject pop a little more. And then you can always, around the back of her, just brush that out so it just adds to like, bring a visual focus to the center. And then um, another thing I like to do is add a layer and then add a little, you see these, that little light up there if you wanna make it look magical. I'll just grab a yellow or yellow orange from the image, holding the Alt key, and then I'll go all the way up to the lightest part of it. And then I'll change that to overlay mode and then pop some light. Make it look a little more magical. And now to finish it off, you can control Alt Shift E and filter, camera raw filter. You can do, you know, a, some, um, you can reduce the highlights a little bit, increase the shadows and just add a little bit of warmth to help bring it all together. And that's as easy as, as it gets. So I do this a lot because I like certain areas that I shoot in, but you, you don't get a lot of variety unless you're willing to drive a very long distance. And especially this time of year for me, um, this, the sun sets too early and I live like an hour away from like most of the like, um, what do you call it, gardens and stuff. So I don't have the time um, to get out there by the time the kids get off school. So I'll use this and just change up my background so that, it, you know, I can add variety and then obviously create um, a different, um, uh, you know, scenery, the ambiance, feeling um, to the images that I'm shooting. Um, let's do another one real quick. So here's a swishy. Um, same thing, we'll go select subject. We'll go through this a little more quickly so you can see how easily you can change your image um, without all the narration. Same thing, I've got my refine edge. My refine edge has the plus here up, uh, um, 
which basically says refine, add to the selection. See how it picked up that little bit of organza on the edge? If you're planning on doing this, it's always good to have like concrete surface or some sort of surface that you shoot on that you can use so you don't have to replace that too because then you don't have to worry about shadows or anything. Um, so let's grab my cobblestone three, control A, control C, control V, control C, and then I'm just gonna, again, start playing around with it. I want that arch in the background. And I'm just gonna leave it here for a minute. I'm gonna um, get mask off some of the back, the bottom, and then I'm gonna fix the shadows so that I can see more clearly what I want to do with it. Okay, I'm going to go to filter, camera raw filter. I'm going to raise those shadows up, bring the highlights down, just give it a flatter feel. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to make those, I'm just going to reduce that. It's very, very yellow right there. So I'm going to reduce some of the yellows, uh, saturation, yellows, and then here I could even go into the reds and push them more towards pink and then push the magentas more towards that um, peachy. A lot of it's picking up orange, don't want to deal with that. Just trying to give it a nice flow, okay? And now I'm going to do the filter blur, Gaussian blur. Kind of digging that. Okay, now I'm gonna do the curves again. Up her pop and then I think I'm gonna try to work with the reds and give a little more yellow yeah okay and same thing before I'm gonna take this yellow I'm gonna pop it here and change it to overlay and just give it a little bit of magic and then reduce the opacity a bit. And then maybe I'll just add a curves. And voila. So it takes it from just a, a, a different look for your images and you don't even have to travel there. So a lot of times people ask me, where did you shoot this at? And I'm like, it doesn't matter <laughs> because it doesn't exist. Um, but that's what I do to keep myself entertained and my images looking a little more magical. So these, I actually, the cobblestone backgrounds are in the category under City Studio. I use these all the time. Um, I love adding the old world look and the cascading flowers, and I think it makes the image really romantic. So I have that in the City Studio category, and I hope this helped. And I hope you share anything that you learned or inspired you because you know... That's my favorite part of teaching. So until next time, stay enchanted.